Hey guys, this is Evan from Easy Origami, and today I'll be teaching you how to fold an origami 3D ring designed by Paolo Bacchetta. This is a simple modular model, and is perfect for any special occasion. Before I get started, it's important to mention that this model is a 3D variation of one of Meta Peterson's origami rings. Both artists have some really fascinating work, so please be sure to check it out by clicking on the links in the description below. This model requires 14 square sheets of paper. Each unit is folded from one square, and I recommend using 3 inch or larger squares to fold the units. Using 3 inch squares will result in a model about 3 inches wide. I'm going to be using larger paper with color on one side and white on the other, but you can use paper with color on both sides. Either way, it will not affect the appearance of the completed model. And once you've prepared your paper, then we're going to start with our first square with the colored side up. And we're going to start by folding in half vertically, so take this right edge and fold it over to the left edge. Align the corners and the edges, then make your crease, and then unfold. And now we're going to rotate the paper so that the crease we just made is now held horizontally. And then we're going to do the same thing in the opposite direction. So once again, take this right edge and fold it over to the left edge. Align the corners and the edges, then make your crease, and then unfold. And now we're going to turn the paper over. And once it's turned over, then we're going to fold up this bottom edge and align it with this existing horizontal crease. So we're just going to pull up the bottom edge like this, and once it's completely aligned with that horizontal crease, then we're not going to crease all the way. We just want to make a small reference crease on the right side of the model here. So just crease about a quarter of the way in from the right, and once you've made that small crease, then you can unfold. And now we're going to rotate the paper so that the reference crease we just made is now held on the top left corner of the model. And now we're going to fold up this bottom edge and align it with that small reference crease. So we're just going to pull up the bottom edge like this, and once the colored edge and the reference crease are aligned, then you want to make sure that the vertical creases in the center of the model are aligned as well. And once your model looks something like this, then you can crease all the way across. And then you can unfold. And now we're going to fold up this bottom edge and align it with this top horizontal crease. So we're just going to pull up the bottom edge like this, and once the colored edge and that crease are aligned, then you can make your crease all the way across. And once your model looks like this, then you can unfold. And now we're going to fold down these top two corners and align them with the central crease intersection here. So we're going to start with this top right corner, and we're simply going to pull the corner down until it aligns with this point here where those two creases intersect. And once everything is aligned, then you can make your crease. And then we're going to do the same thing on the left. So once again, take this top left corner, and we're going to pull it down and align it with that central crease intersection just like we did on the other side. And once everything is aligned, then you can make your crease. And then your model should look like this. And now we're going to fold up this bottom edge along this existing horizontal crease here. So we're simply going to pull up the bottom edge just like this. And once you have something like this, then we're going to turn the model over. And now we're going to fold in these two white triangles along these diagonal colored edges here. So we're going to start with this triangle on the right, and what we want to do is simply pull it over to the left as far as it'll go, just like this. And you'll see that it'll align with this colored edge here. Then you can make your crease. And once you have that, then we're going to do the same thing on the left. So once again, you simply want to pull this white triangle over to the right as far as it goes, just like this. Again, it should align with this colored edge, and then you can make your crease. And once you've done that on both sides, your model should look like this. And now we're going to fold up this bottom edge along this existing horizontal crease here. So we're simply going to pull up this bottom edge just like this, and then we want to reinforce the creases through all layers by simply creasing along this bottom edge. And once your model looks like this, then we're going to turn the paper over. And now we're going to fold over this top right corner and align it with this point here where these two edges intersect. So we're going to start by lifting up the right side of the model, and we're simply going to pull it over to the left, just like this, until this right corner aligns with this point here where those two edges intersect. And once everything is aligned, then you can make your crease. Crease sharply because you'll be creasing through a lot of layers. And once your model looks like this, then you can unfold. And now we're going to do the same thing on the left. So we're going to fold over this top left corner and align it with this point here where these two edges intersect. So we're going to start by pulling over the left side of the model, just like this, and you want to pull it over until that corner and the edge intersection are aligned, just like this, and then you can crease through all layers just like we did before. Again, crease sharply, and once you have this, then you can unfold. Now we're going to make the model 3D by folding in along these two vertical creases that we just made. 
So we're going to start with this crease on the right. And what we want to do is simply pull the right side of the model over to the left, just like this along that existing crease. You can just hold the paper like this at a 90 degree angle, and then we're going to do the same thing on the left. So once again, pull the left side of the model over to the right along that existing vertical crease. Again, you can hold it at a 90 degree angle, and then if you put the model on its side, it should look like this. And this is one completed unit. Now you must fold 13 more. Once you've folded all 14 units, we're going to need two to start the assembly. Then, look at one, and you'll notice that it has a rectangular flap, just like this on both sides, and it also has a small pocket underneath this color triangle here on both sides. So once again, we're going to take our first two units, and we're going to start by inserting the second unit's rectangular flap underneath of the first unit's triangular pocket. So we're going to do that by lifting up both of the units, and again, you simply want to slide that rectangular flap underneath the triangular pocket, just like this. And as you're doing this, you can bring both of the units together, just like this, as far as they'll go. And once you have something like that, then we're going to turn the model over, and we're going to do the same exact thing. So once again, you'll see that the second unit's rectangular flap is now held on top, so we simply want to slide that underneath of the first unit's triangular pocket, just like we did on the other side. And once again, you can simply slide both of the units together, as far as they'll go, until you have something like this. Then we're going to turn the model back over, and once you've done that on both sides, then you've connected two units. And now we're going to add the third unit the same way. And we're going to do that by inserting the third unit's rectangular flap underneath of the second unit's triangular pocket, just like we did before. So once again, we're going to lift up all three units, and then we're going to slide the third unit's flap underneath the second unit's pocket, just like we did before. So you simply want to slide all three units together, just like that. And once you have this, then we're going to turn the model over and do the same exact thing. So again, you'll see that the third unit's rectangular flap is now held on top. So what we want to do is slide that flap underneath the second unit's triangular pocket, just like we did before. So just slide the third unit's flap underneath the second unit's pocket, just like this. And again, you can push all three units together. And once you have something like this, you can turn the model back over. And now you've connected three units. And now we're going to connect the remaining 11 units the same way. And as you assemble the last three units, you'll start to see that the first and last units will overlap. So as you continue, just make sure that the first unit's flaps are always held on top. This will make it much easier to connect the rest of the units. And to finish off the assembly, we're simply going to insert the first unit's flaps inside of the last unit's pockets, just like we've been doing. So we're going to do that on both sides, just like this. And once you have this, then we're going to turn the model over. And then your 3D ring is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to fold an origami 3D ring designed by Paolo Bacchetta. Feel free to upload photos of your completed model to the new YouTube gallery on my website to be featured here in my next video. Or you can simply upload your photos to Instagram with the hashtag EasyOrigami to be featured here as well. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and thank you for watching.